I've been meaning to make a video on this, and I just watched an Enter the Stars video, and it just crystallized it for me that I, I should say something about this. Watched a lot of a lot of truther channels as it is talk about Saturn and understand that the powers that be worship Saturn and 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 all that kind of thing, but I've never really heard why why Saturn out of all the planets. I've never really heard it presented by these these people that I listen to and watch all their videos and respect a lot. I mean, I've seen a video after video after video about, you know, the hexagon, and that's the Star of David, and the pillars, the cube, the whole, the whole shebang. You know, it all goes back to Saturn, and I agree. Everything that they present, I agree that it goes back to Saturn. But the question, again, is the why. Why Saturn? And the answer can be found uh, via the Thunderbolts channel here on YouTube. Uh, I'll put the link, obviously, down in the description. And to anyone new to this, I recommend watching Symbols of an Alien Sky. It's on their YouTube channel um, as a good primer for the basic information. I'm going to lay out a super simple version here. So... You know, for for an in-depth explanation of what I'm going to say and what I'm going to show you, you know, go to Thunderbolt's channel. I feel like that's the missing piece for what's been going on, what people are trying to figure out here. You know, they're doing their research and the Thunderbolts are doing their research, and there's really the bridge between the two to bring them both together um, that I haven't haven't really seen connected yet. Uh, I'm going to show you now what what made me make this video in the first place. A little clip from Enter the Stars. And uh, we'll go from there. Now, what blows me away is how these people knew that this existed many millennia before telescopes could ever see this. And there's only one way, and that is... The reason is because Saturn was our star before the current sun. Um, see Saturn there on the left, and it's... It might be hard to see, but, you know, the center of that is the hexagon. Then Venus with all the, the streaks coming off of it, and Mars to the right. And then Earth is off screen to the right. So from our point of view, Earth, Earth's pole, the north pole of Earth, where Polaris is now, was aligned with the hexagon. So you could see the hexagon of Saturn at all times. The sky rotated around Saturn. Now this next picture is a little more towards Earth's point of view, and the next picture will be exactly what Earth's point of view would have been during the alignment of Mars, Venus, Earth, and Saturn. But when Venus and Mars would rotate out of view, the alignment wouldn't be there, but Saturn would remain fixed at the North Pole. So now here would be Earth's point of view. So this would be the polar configuration. Um, but you can imagine when Venus and Mars were not there, we would just be looking at the hexagon. So all of these ancient, call them religions, I guess, that, you know, through secret societies and through their telling of their stories and keeping it secret from the public, they're remembering. They're remembering the time when the sun was Saturn. It is their god because it was the god back in, back in time. Now I'm going to play a few different clips from Duardo Cardona also on the Thunderbolts channel. Uh, take a listen. It's just an abbreviated version of the speech that's on the channel. I suggest that you go listen to the entire thing. I'll put the links down there for, for all of this stuff. And hopefully this has uh, been enlightening and maybe giving another piece to the puzzle. As Velikovsky had stated in an almost offhand manner back in mid-1973, Saturn had somehow flipped up in Nova-like brilliance. 
It is unfortunate that Velikovsky misplaced the event in time, placing Protosatan's flare-up just ahead of what has come down to us as Noah's deluge, when there is much better evidence for placing it some 5,000 years earlier during that primeval event that lit up the sky for the very first time during mankind's surge on Earth. In the book of Genesis, this event came to pass when Elohim gave the order to let there be light. But let this not be thought of as a unique biblical event. On the contrary, the sudden shedding of light into what had been a somewhat darkened world is described in various ways in the mytho-historical records of just about all ancient nations from Mesopotamia and the rest of the Near East, India and the Far East, including China, into Egypt, down through Africa, Greece and Rome, North America, and across the stormy seas to the islands in their midst. When the plasma spheres of such bodies come in contact with one another, an electric current in the form of an arc discharge will fly between them to the detriment of the lower voltage body. In the case in question, the lower voltage body was proto-Saturn, our primordial sun, flared up in a brilliant, blinding light that went down in myth of history as day one. As those who are familiar with the thesis I am here submitting know, Earth's primordial brown dwarf star eventually turned into the gaseous planet we now know as Saturn. And yes, I do realize that those who are not familiar with the astronomical evidence that backs this up will find it hard to accept. That Earth had formerly been a satellite of the proto-Saturnian body was first hinted at by Oscar Reichenbach in 1884 before it was taken up by Immanuel Belkowski in 1971. And the planetary, and that the planetary Saturn had originally been deified and adored as mankind's supreme god all over the ancient world was magnificently documented by David Talbot during the same decade. Indeed, as Talbot stated, the consistency with which early astronomers Identify Saturn as the former creator king is extraordinary. As he reported concerning his research of Earth's primordial catastrophic history, quote, nothing came as a greater surprise to me than the sheer quantity of material bearing directly on the Saturnian tradition. And as I myself discovered during my own investigations of the same traditions, the Saturnian deity kept showing up in every myth or historical avenue that I followed, despite the fact that I actually tried very hard to get away from him. Because of a major event, a turning point in Earth's cosmic history, to which I shall get to in a while, it was posited by Jurgens that Earth and its primordial proto-Saturnian stellar host had been traveling together outside the demarcation of the solar system before they were captured by our present sun. And as unusual as that may sound to some, stars are known to wander alone through space, vacating their systems and or invading others. As it has been pointed out, the line between planets and brown dwarfs is rather blurred. At present, the Saturn radiates more heat than it receives from the sun. Its total heat emission has been calculated to be about two or three times the solar energy it actually receives, and as it has been claimed, an actual internal heat source is definitely called for. In view of what the ancients had to say, it is more than probable that Saturn's excess heat is a residue from when it radiated as Earth's primordial sun. Besides its excess heat, Saturn also shines with its own light at least to an extent. As low as its illumination is, its glow, which has been likened to a Chinese lantern, is sufficient to backlight the planet's clouds. But let us cut straight across the lawn that the planet Saturn is the relic of what had previously been a brown dwarf star is now an accepted tenet of mainstream astronomy. And there are indications, or is there any evidence, that Earth did not always belong to the solar system? As a matter of fact, NASA's Genesis spacecraft made a hell of a discovery when its instruments revealed that the solar system's inner planets 
including Earth, do not contain the same ratios of oxygen and nitrogen as the Sun. While the Interstellar Boundary Explorer found that the gases contained within the entire solar system are different from those outside its boundaries. What all this and other evidence has been interpreted to mean is that the solar system, including Earth, came into being in a different part of the galaxy than the one in which it presently located. More importantly, however, the Genesis spacecraft readings imply that Earth could not have formed out of the same nebulous material that is thought to have created the Sun. What all this boils down to is that while the Sun seems to have shifted its location within the Milky Way galaxy, some of its members, including Earth, had to have been captured into its chaotic family even later. Therefore, seeing that our ancient ancestors were not exaggerating in their descriptions of these primordial events, so please let us pay attention to what they have recorded. Thank you for listening.